Well, let's see. Looks like we're probably going to start here. If we could encourage everybody to take their seats, um, we'll go ahead and start with the presentation this evening. If uh, anyone hasn't already, though, we do have water and some snacks over here. Um, please help yourself. But I do want to thank everybody tonight for coming out, those that are here in person and those that are available or have logged on online. So we appreciate your interest in the water tower because we definitely have uh, an interest as well. But um, as a way of introduction, I'm Chris Fredrickson, the city's public works director. And if I can go around, I guess we'll try to introduce some of the staff that are in the room tonight. We have Kent Fugel, um, our city engineer. We have Eric Grossarth with our PIO. We also have Carrie Hammond, who's also a PIO. Um, we have um, our library board chairperson, Mary Lund, Robert Wright, the library director. We have council member Francis that's joined us this evening. We have Chris Canfield, who's the assistant Pub public works director, and Dave Richards, who is a water superintendent. So again, we'll, uh, we'll have all of us that will be available after the presentation to answer some questions. but. Um, but with that, I did this in the last presentation as well. I am going to apologize. Tonight you're going to hear from a couple of engineers. I know how that is. We spend a lot of time with engineers, and maybe that's the no, not the nicest way to spend your evening tonight. But we have tried to make the presentation um, to have as little as far as the technical details that we can wean out of that presentation for discussion. Um, but there will be a few plan sheets that will that will run through. Um, but tonight the intent. And get this to forward. Um, we do want to really run over a little bit of our project review, talk a little bit about our anticipated construction impacts, how that will impact parking with the construction, what will post construction look like, and then how, as as inter interested uh, residents of the city, how can you stay informed with with what may come up, and then also deal with questions and concerns. So. Um, as I kind of mentioned, for the sake of time tonight, we have the building um, available to us for an hour. If we can, I would encourage everyone, if we could hold questions to the end, we'll end the presentation and then we'll have staff that will be able to, to work one-on-one -on -one to answer any of those questions. And I think we do have the ability to respond to some questions that are posed online as well. So, so we'll look forward to that. Um, but in that, I guess I'm probably going to have just my own take on the water tower. Um, all told in the city, you know, Public Works has been pretty consistent in that we need to stand up a million gallons of storage to meet the growing demand um, of a growing city. And I suppose just as a background, I'd like people to recognize, um, other than our 19 dedicated employees with a water division, our water tower is probably the most significant piece of the puzzle, if you will, of supplying water service to our residents. Um, it's something that allows us to deal seamlessly with uh, many of the emergency situations we have, whether that's power outages, whether that's um, larger fires, large uses. Um, so with that, it, it really does operate as a shock absorber for our system. So when we talk about standing this particular project up, and I hope if there's nothing else that you remember as part of the presentation this evening, the piece of the puzzle is this is a very crucial piece to our water division and the fact that every day, when you turn on your water tap, that water continues to flow, right? And and I think with that, there's a lot of utilities that we have within the city. Um, we do experience power outages and some things like that, but the water division and the water system that we supply to your tap is kind of unique in the fact that it's required to operate every day. We don't take any days off. We don't take Christmas off to uh, go, I guess, play with the kids and open presents. That water system runs every day. So it's pretty unique. These folks that run the water division take a great deal of pride in supplying that clean uh, and fairly cheap service um, to your tap. So with that, I would like to uh, turn the rest of the presentation over to our water superintendent, Dave Richards, 
And again, we'll we'll answer questions once we're done. But again, thank you all for coming and make sure we have a lot of snacks and some drinks. So um, please help yourself. Again, I know it's yeah, you've already been thanked for coming, but I would like to, from my behalf, thank all of you for coming as well tonight and those who have, that have logged online uh, to view this presentation. Uh, starting out with the project review, uh, the elevated tower that exists was built in 1937, making it now, what, 85 years old and, and getting older. Uh, the purpose of the elevated water tower, as Chris said, it serves uh, numerous purposes for us. It allows us uh, an area to chlorinate our water for water to mix with chlorine and disinfect the water. It also provides pressure for our water system. Uh, whenever, you, as Chris had mentioned, when you turn the tap on, uh, that water comes out. The elevated tower is, is intri integral to that. The elevated tower also supplies water for us in times of need, whether it be high use or whether it be for emergency uses, fire flow. Uh, but the issues that are happening with the elevated tower is as it's growing older, it's meeting its design life and needs to be replaced. As you can see from the pictures on the slide, uh, foundations are cracking. The pipes within the elevated tower are deteriorating. The paint is failing on the elevated tower. And this is just a few of a myriad of other problems that the elevated tower currently has. We looked at city owned properties. We identified numerous city owned properties that were feasible for relocating uh, the new water tower in order to replace the old one. This is an example of the type of water tower that we've selected. Other types of water towers either created a much larger footprint down on the ground level or they were constructed of solid steel, which meant you had to paint the entire surface. This is called a composite water tower. The base pedestal that you see is made of concrete, so it does not require paint. And the steel bowl up on top is the only flat, just those flat surfaces are the only surfaces that require to be painted. We are still uh, working on design plans. We completed 60% designs so of some drawings we'll uh, show you in just a little bit. And uh, more information about the design of the elevated tower will be forthcoming. Now, funding. Back in 2015, uh, the city completed a water facility plan, basically like a master plan for our water system. In that master plan document, this was identified as a project that needed to be replaced. In anticipation of the dollar figure associated with this, rates have been adjusted over the last few years to make sure that we are able to fund that project in-house if necessary. The uh, city may take the opportunity to pursue grant funding if grant funding becomes available. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking into that. Timeline. We began this back in 2019 through the fall winter. We had an initial site evaluation and public outreach and campaign. In spring of 2020 through winter 2021, we've continued that site evaluation and selection. In April 2020, through this fall of 2022, engineering design and public meetings are being held. Uh, this is the second of this type of public meeting uh, that we've had where anyone can come in and, and attend or log in and see a live stream. We previously had a neighborhood meeting, which was for residents or business owners that were within 300 feet of the library parking lot. That was a legal requirement as part of a conditional use permitting process that the city has to go through uh, to build the water tower in the location that we would like. So in fall of 2022 here and fall of, through fall of 2024, we anticipate being uh, construction of the new elevated tower, barring any perhaps timeline setbacks that might be re might result from uh, grant applications. And in fall 2024 through spring of 2025, we anticipate the once the new tower is built and placed into service, it will take the place of the old tower, which we would then be able to drain and decommission and take apart. There will be additional public outreach as a result of, of that. 
Construction impacts. Construction details are be provided generally after the contractor is selected with regards to you know, start date, uh, hours of operation, as far as when they'll be working, et cetera. But we do know that with construction comes noise and dust. That's just a given when construction happens. We can uh, place requirements on the contractor to try and keep uh, the grounds moist so that dust is more minimal of a concern. There will be construction fencing around the site, uh, blocking just general public from accessing the construction site for safety reasons. Park Avenue and the alleyway just south of the library parking lot may experience short uh, duration closures during construction. This is for safety, uh, largely as the elevated tower is constructed and begins to go vertical as they start to construct that pedestal and as they construct the steel bowl and then prepare to jack that up to elevation. Sometimes the construction work will be closer to the right of way and we wanna make sure that we keep people safe by blocking that off. We don't envision those uh, closures of being very long there may be some periodic closures of Park Avenue during material delivery as well as they bring in uh, large vehicles, semis uh, to offload equipment and materials for construction. Park Avenue sidewalk on the west side uh, of Park Avenue between the library parking uh, entrance and the alleyway will be closed off during active construction. And that is again, just to keep the public uh, in particular pedestrians from getting too close to construction activities. What you're seeing now is kind of a depiction. It's, it'll be difficult to see perhaps uh, here for those of you in person just due to the size of it, but we have some poster boards on either side. Uh, they're the same poster boards on both sides. So you can go to one side or the other. And afterwards we'll have public, you know, the public can come to city staff and have questions answered if they would so choose. Uh, online, those people, if you're uh, struggling to see this, perhaps you'd be able to go to the city's website afterwards where this uh, will be available. Uh, there will be links available. I'll show you how to get to there uh, towards the end of the presentation. So what you're seeing though is the, I've identified where the IF Public Library is. North would be facing due up on this drawing. What you're seeing outlined right now in purple and kind of, a, kind of got like a brick hatching to that purple is what would be identified as the construction zone that would be fenced off. We will look at occupying the south half of the library parking lot during construction. And this is largely for the contractor to stage materials and equipment and to keep again the public safe. You can see uh, it skipped one on me. <laughs> Sorry, I went back to a previous slide. Uh, now you can see that blue circle in the library parking lot. That is the excavation where the foundation will go. That's the, the complete diameter of where that foundation will be constructed. You can see in Park Avenue, there's some uh, red hatching that's blocked off. That is what we envision as being perhaps temporary closures for materials to be dropped off with semis. And then the kind of in between the blue circle and Park Avenue is kind of a thinner kind of burgundy looking area. That is the sidewalk that will be closed off during construction activities. Now, as you look, as, as the tower starts to be built and the foundation is now complete, you can see that there are two blue circles. The smaller blue circle in the center is what the, that's the pedestal. So when the tower is complete and the parking lot is rebuilt, that is all that the tower will occupy within the library parking lot. That's the size. The larger blue circle, that is the steel bowl. Now it, get, it gets constructed at the ground level. That's why I show it there. But once the steel bowl is constructed, they then jack it up to elevation and, and fix it to the, to the top of the pedestal. The green squares that are on this diagram, that's where we envision the contractor to uh, place cranes in order to lift items like concrete as they are pouring concrete pedestal up or to lift steel 
to have it welded on steel bowl. And then there's one square that you can see kind of furthest to the left. That is a larger crane that gets brought in. Once the steel bowl is raised to grade and placed at the top of the pedestal, a larger crane will be available and parked there. That's to bring steel up to the very top to put the top on the bowl. And then as you see uh, yellow, those are long skinny, uh, those long skinny yellow rectangles. Those are envisioning of semi trucks that are making deliveries to the library parking lot for the contractor. With it, we figure that they can come down Park Avenue off of Broadway, heading south, turn into their construction zone, and then exit perhaps going west towards the river onto Capitol Avenue, where they would be required to make a right-hand turn only. This may require a little bit of uh, removal of existing improvements along Capitol Avenue, curb bed or sidewalk perhaps, and uh, most likely a tree, but I'll address that here shortly. And as you can see, the red tones in Park Avenue on the alley, that's what we envision as they start to go vertical, like I said, temporary closures when construction is closest to Park Avenue or closest to the alley. So post-construction, this tower will have lighting associated with it. It's planned to have lighting. There will be fencing, security fencing around the tower, landscaping, around the tower and the landscaping within the library parking lot will be reconfigured. I'll go over that shortly. And uh, library parking obviously will be reconfigured with the placement of the tower. So this is the library parking lot as it currently exists. You can see green areas are landscaped. Uh, I've got some circular trees that are identified. Uh, we anticipate four trees being lost with this project, one closest to the alley, two in the center island of the library parking lot, and then perhaps one by Capitol if we have to make an exit for truck traffic to exit out onto Capitol Avenue. Uh, in the orange squares, I've identified the number of parking stalls in each row of parking stalls so that you can, we could take a count to see how many parking stalls there were before and how many there were after. This is what we envision the parking lot looking like after the tower is completed. The blue circle, again, is the pedestal that remains down at ground level now that the steel bowl has been raised up to the 180 or so feet that in elevation that it sits. Uh, you can see surrounding that blue pedestal is kind of a little burgundy square line. That's anticipated to be fencing a security fence that remains after the tower is complete to keep uh, you know, the public from getting to this secure facility. Uh, the darker green is revised landscaping areas for the parking lot. And then you can see additional trees that are colored uh, a lighter shade of green. Those trees by code uh, have to be placed in the library parking lot as part of their landscaping requirements. So we'll lose four trees and we're adding a significant amount more than what we'll be losing. And in the blue on the far right hand side of this drawing, you'll see that the parking stalls prior to construction, existing parking stalls totaled 96. Following construction, I count 95. And this is largely just based off of reconfiguring the existing parking lot, massaging some landscaping and, and being able to squeeze as many parking stalls out of the area as we, as we can legally while meeting landscaping requirements. So what happens to the library parking during construction? Obviously we lose a uh, number of stalls during construction when, we, when the contractor occupies the south portion of the parking lot. Well, this map was created by one of our PIOs. You can see uh, the live, if you see hone in on the yellow area that's kind of got the black hatching through it, that is the south half of the library parking lot, what we plan to occupy during construction. The parking areas that are identified in green are areas that are either available for library people to park or they would be shared parking throughout the day. We lose, I believe it was, Yep, 
the number of stalls that were lost due to construction. Oh, there it is, 58 stalls are lost as a result of construction. During, uh, you know, they'll be available again after we piece the parking lot back together, but during construction, 58 stalls. The green parking areas that would, could be shared between library patrons and the businesses that are in the South Downtown area, total 331, that's the green areas. Orange areas, we've kind of identified as orange because we wanna preserve areas for the businesses that, that use those parking stalls for their clientele. We've identified those in orange. Those would be available for library patrons after working hours. We've identified those to be kind of blocked off from eight to five, but then after 5 p.m. while the library is still open, we envision those could be utilized as well by library patrons. Those that you see red with the, the no parking sign on them, those are private parking spaces that the public are not to be used, not to use. And then you can see over on the, on the far left side and in the legend, there is a, a golf cart uh, that's depicted. Those are areas, and this is still uh, work being worked out with library and library staff. They've offered to perhaps run shuttles for moms with small children or those who would like to use the shuttle system so that if you park in an area further away uh, that you could get a golf cart ride over to the library parking lot and then be lifted back uh, to your car after you're done at the library. Again, those are subject, those locations that are shown on this map are subject to change. So stay informed. How can you stay informed? On the city's website, you can see on the left there, there's a stay informed button on the city's homepage. You click on that, it allows you to set up notifications. You can be add notifications, send them to your email. Uh, you can also on social media, the city has accounts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, you can like the city accounts on those and receive notifications as a result through social media. Additionally, we'll have advertisements through normal media, whether they be radio, whether it be print media, on television, and likewise. And this is a QR code. Uh, for those of you that are here, uh, each of the boards that you see on the side have a QR code as, uh, attached to them. Those of you that are online have the ability to access this QR code uh, by going to the city's website and re-accessing this presentation on the city's website. But if you have a smartphone, you turn on your camera, you hold your camera up to this QR code, and it'll open up or give you a link that you can connect to the city's webpage. It'll take you right to the water tower webpage that the city has. And that is the end of the presentation that we have for you tonight. Uh, this will end our online streaming portion and open up the comment period for those who are in. We will have staff to assist you, uh, answer questions on boards on both sides. So again, thank you for coming. We appreciate your time.